All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and I'm going to so, right, so now, we'll go ahead and get started. If you can't hear us, let us know. The mayor doesn't necessarily like to use the microphone, uh, nor do I. And if people like Debbie doesn't giggle all day long, we'll be able to get through this. Just kidding, Debbie. Um, so I'll turn it over to the mayor. We'll be talking about the toter system. Uh, if you remember back several months ago, you were the first to be presented with the proposal. The proposal's been adopted, and now it's time to kick it off. So, Mayor. Thank you, Jim. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone back there hear me? Yes. So I don't have to use the microphone. I hate to, I talk with my hands, so when I have a microphone, the <laughs> microphone goes every place, so it's better not to have to use one. Um, so before we begin with the, the Toter information, um, this is normally coffee with the mayor on a quarterly basis. I will be sticking around later, so we'll go through all of the, the toter stuff, and then I'll stick around to answer questions that I would normally answer at coffee with the mayor. But I think I'll just start by addressing um, the fact that um, Jim has decided that um, he is better suited working in the Veteran Service Office rather than the Council on Aging, since he's um, a veteran and has served in that position prior. Um, so. At the last city council meeting, I appointed Jim as the veterans agent. He will continue to serve as the interim council on aging director. Um, and we've begun a search process um, for the next director here. And I will be working with the human resources department, Jim, and the council on aging board uh, as we go through that process. And we just posted the position last week. And we're posting it um, and giving folks 30 days to apply. So. Um, I will keep you guys informed, and if it means that we need to do a special meeting here before the next quarterly meeting, we'll be happy to come back. So um, I wanted to take the opportunity. Um, my first presentation about toters happened here at the Senior Center. Uh, I will admit that I was very nervous coming here to the Senior Center and proposing, and by the time we were done, I think we walked out. Not everyone is completely happy, but I think people understood and we were beginning to make progress. So I thought, hey, we have coffee with the mayor and we're already gonna be there, so let's start our first presentation. I think you guys were very helpful in my first presentation as we were rolling out the proposal, and any feedback that I get from today will allow me to update and, and improve the presentation. The commissioner's on vacation, so you get me and only me, um, but I do have Catherine Van Bramer and Brittany Walsh from my office here that will be taking notes for me. So in the presentation, we're gonna talk about the new system, we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts, we're gonna talk about the timeline, we're gonna talk about the things that are not changing. We're gonna talk about bulky waste pickup, customer service, what are you gonna do with your existing trash containers and your blue bins if you have them, um, and the transfer station, and then we'll do a little bit of recycling 101. Um, and if people have questions anytime during the thing, just let me know and we'd be happy to do it. So this is a um, picture of the new automated curbside trash pickup that will be coming. They're going to have arms on the side. The arms will reach out, grab the bucket, and, and dump it. Um, this is the actual size of the containers. Um, so if folks want to come look at it and wheel it out, I watched a few people in the beginning kind of come and see, um, maybe it's small, but it moves easy on wheels, and so um, it's here, and you guys can take it for a spin. The one for trash will have this light green colored cover, and your one for recyclables will have a, a light blue cover, So, and they'll be labeled, this is for food waste and this is for um, recyclables. Want to switch? Um, so do's and don'ts. Right off the bat, I think the first question that everyone keeps asking us is, where do I put my toter? What do I need to do? How, how do I need to, to be able to do it? So when you, when you wheel it to the curb, um, you will have it handle side facing the road. And it can be um, anywhere within three feet of the curb onto your property. So if you want to put it out on the road, you can do that. If you want to put it on a grass spot next to your driveway, you can do that. If you want to put it in your driveway, you can do that. You need to leave a three-foot separation between your recyclable toter and your trash toter. 
so the arms can go out and grab the toter and pick it up. Um, you need to leave it five feet away from other objects, so um, your vehicle, your mailbox, trees, um, you need to, 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 to leave that five foot space. I'm going to say that that's mostly to protect the other things, right? The arms are going out and doing. If you have your toter one foot away from your vehicle and the arms are working, there could be potential damage to your vehicle. So uh, we're looking to keep those spots. The don'ts, don't put bags outside the toter. Make sure that your cover can close, recognizing the fact that the arm is going to pick it up and it's going to go like this and the lid's going to start falling off. If the lid isn't completely closed, the trash can be dumping out as the arm is picking up the trash. Um, don't place behind your mailbox and don't place toter in front of toter. They got to be side by side because the, the truck is not going to be able to um, pick it up and then don't lean it on the ground. In theory, when it picks it up, the good news is it's going to put it back in the exact same spot that it picked it up from, give or take an inch or so. So you're not going to have to worry about the guy dumping your tote or your garbage pail and tossing it because um, it's automatically lifted up and put back down in the same spot. Um, a little bit about totes because I don't think it's in this presentation. Every tote has a serial number. And so when Casella starts delivering totes to your house, it has a serial number. So if someone steals your tote, it has a serial number and we'll be able to go to your neighbor and say, this doesn't belong to you. Give it back. Um, hopefully we don't have those problems. Um, here is just a diagram of what I was saying. So you can put it out in your driveway, around your driveway. Those are just some examples of, of how you can put your stuff out. And a, a few more examples. Um, here, you can't do both. It's either got to be that one or that one. Because if you put one in front of the other, um, it's not going to work. No, um, I would have it close to the curb because, again, the car, truck's going to go by um, and, and we've got the three foot to, to be. So I would prefer myself to see it in your driveway or on the, on the grass patch. I know. Um, and so during, during the, the rollout, we heard, what are we going to do for Appleton Ave? These are actually, whatever you want to call them, space shot pictures of where we are, where we put that in. So. Folks said, hey, there's no way that we can put our trash out on Appleton Ave because there's cars parked there all the time. Here's a recent picture of Appleton Ave um, and the area that we were talking about. So we're, we're trying, when we hear people say, hey, this isn't going to work for whatever reason, we're actually trying to put the energy into making this as easy as possible to make the switch. It's not going to be completely 100%. It's a change, and anytime there's a change, we're all somewhat resistant to change. So, but we're trying on our end to make it as simple as possible. Um, our timeline. So we're going to start pretty soon, the next couple of weeks. We are going to roll this out, all the recycling piece first, and then all the trash piece second. And we're going to roll it out by the date of your delivery. So we're going to start with recyclables. And those of you that are Friday Roots, you're the guinea pig. You're the first ones out of the gate. You're going to learn uh, before anyone else. And the reason we're doing it week by week is that we're going to be looking at it. I am not going to stand here and tell you that there are going to be no bumps in the road as we go through this process, which is why we're gradually rolling it out so that if we notice that something is drastically wrong, we've got the opportunity to make changes on the fly and not have something be crazy for everyone. I don't suspect that we're going to have that problem. So on the recycling routes, 9-11 is the first drop-off date. Folks are going to be getting their recyclable tote dropped off to them. And then that Friday, so that'll be Wednesday, that Friday you will be using your recyclable toter um, to put the recyclables out. And then each week thereafter, the Thursday route is next, the Wednesday route is next, the Tuesday route is next, and if you're the Monday route, you're the last of the five that, that will get implemented. Similarly, when we get to trash time, we'll do the exact same thing, starting with 
October 16th, you will get your trash toter on October 16th. And then on October 18th, that Friday, you'll begin to use that toter for where you're at. Um, and you can go um, all the way through. So the Monday route, the last first pickup is 11-11. That should give us plenty of time before the snow hits so that we have about a month's worth of time at least to, to be accustomed to the, to the new process. Um, while we're talking about totes, we have said and will continue to say, and I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, I did not dictate that everyone had to have a trash one, a paper recycle, and a plastics recycle, because I've heard loud and clear, I don't know where I'm putting them. So I don't think it made sense for me to say you have to have three. Now for me, I'm going to say that I'm going to be lazy and I want three so that I can just have my recycled paper, my recycled plastics, and I can just dump it in it. I thought about it long and hard. I already have the small blue bins. At first, I was thinking I would just keep them and separate like I normally do today. And then when it comes trash day, take all of my plastic and dump it into the recyclable toter. When it's paper, dump it into. But I decided that I wanted to be lazy. And I think I have enough room in my garage to put the three of them. So that's the option I'm going to choose. That's not a mandate. That is an option for folks to be able to take. If this is not going to be enough for trash for your household, um, you can ask for a second tote. We will be charging you $40 per quarter to have that there. Originally, we were talking about adding it to your water and sewer bill. Uh, the more that we started thinking about it and people started asking questions, we've opted that this will be a separate bill that will come to you. The good news is, and I'm not telling you this so that you can run out and get an extra toter and then turn it back in later, we are not going to start charging for the second toter until the 1st of January. So again, to make this as easy as possible, we're trying to make sure that we get this entire system rolled out. We take care of any of the kinks that we have, and then, and then we'll go on to the next piece. Um, for the extra tote, whether it's recyclable or trash, you can call Public Works Office, and they're keeping a list. I think that is becoming very cumbersome for them. So I am working with our IT department to create an online form. Now, not everyone's going to want to go online and sign up, but you'll have the ability in the coming week to go online, say, I want a second recyclable tote or I want a second trash tote, um, and then we'll do that. Please understand that if that is something that you are opting for, there could be up to three-week time frame for it to go from the city to Casella and Casella to get that extra container um, to your home. What's not changing? Uh, I, I hate to read it, but I read Facebook all the time. <laughs> and um, I don't want to get into national politics, whatever party, but if you want to talk about fake news, I find an awful lot of it on social media. And there's a lot of stuff on social media that is saying that we are going to single stream recycling. That is not true. We are still staying with dual stream recycling. So that means just what we do today. Paper is one week, plastic is the next, paper is the next, plastic is the next, paper is the, nothing changes. That's going to stay the same. Um, the daily collection schedule stay the same. So if you're a Monday route, you stay a Monday route. Banned items. Um, and here's the piece where I'm not sure all of us know what we can and can't throw out. Um, and I'm sure all of us, including myself, have violated one of these banned items. So banned items, you still can't throw out textiles. Does anyone know what textiles are? Closed. Closed. Well, in the last couple of years, I cleaned up my house and I threw out tons of clothes. I donated tons of clothes to organizations, but the stuff that I didn't think was quality to donate, I threw it out. Learned later that I shouldn't have been doing that. Um, mattresses, electronics, hazardous waste, and organics, you still um, cannot do that. The city's recyc mattress recycling service will stay the same. There is a textile small items donation service. Um, and we will make sure that that information is out on the website and provided for folks. So if you want to donate 
a, a, a Mr. Coffee or, and you want to donate a hummus of clothes, there is an organization within the city of Pittsfield. They do it a couple times a year. You call them, they come, and you just leave it out on your curb, and they'll pick it up. You don't have to do any more than that. Uh, we will um, continue with electronics and household hazardous waste events. And in the contract, we've asked Casella for monies to put on both of these. So um, Casella will be supplementing these um, events when we have them, and it won't just be city-sponsored and city-funded. And lastly, um, there are compost bins and private co compost services available. Some folks use it today. That won't go away either. Those will still be available for folks to use. Um, we talked dual stream recycling system. Nothing changes. We are going to do um, a much better job of helping folks know what they can and can't recycle so that um, half of the problem that we all have with trash is we just throw everything into the trash bucket. If we look at the can of peas that we just warmed up for dinner and we look at the plastic uh, container that chicken is sold in, all those rinse and throw into the recyclables, not the trash. And I think we'll ensure a, a better time. There are new calendars which are going to get reprinted because this is pretty flimsy paper, and if I expect this, this calendar goes from September of this year through December of 2025. If we expect this to last, it needs um, a higher quality paper, and so we're getting them reprinted. But there are some of these here today for folks to take. The schedule doesn't change, so if you have the old one on your refrigerator, that is still valid until the end of the year. If you want one of these, you can take these, and in, in a couple weeks we'll have the... Um, heavier papered calendars there. Um, the bulky waste pickup will still continue with a, uh, a sticker of $20. So if you have a couch that you want to get rid of, you go to City Hall or any of the locations to buy a sticker, um, you can place that on your couch and we'll still take it away. In the, months of in the months other than May, June, July, and December, there's only one bulky waste pickup per month. So when you buy your sticker, you'll be told what that day is to, to put it out. On the months of May, June, July, and December, we will be doing two um, pickups per month. On the customer service side, um, you can still call the mayor's office if you have an issue with Casella. We will be putting out phone numbers for Casella as well. Um, in fact, Catherine's going to do it right now. 423. Um, and with this program, Casella has an app. So in the very near future, you would be able to download an app. There will be all kinds of information on the app that talks about both the trash and recycling program. So if folks want to learn more about recycling, there will be another way for folks to, to get it, download the app, and be able to go there. Um, you'll be able to, on your own, um, go in and say, hey, you didn't pick up my trash and they'll come get it, I'm still going to advise you to call my office because I know that my office will do follow-up to make sure that it actually gets picked up. So what I don't want you to do is go into an app and say, hey, they didn't pick up my trash. Please go um, get it. And then three weeks later, you're calling my office saying no one came back. If you call my office to begin with, we make sure that we do the follow-up and we make sure that it gets picked up. The transfer station is in... Um, Construction phase currently, it should be done by the um, end of November. Here is kind of the design of where it is. So when folks come in, uh, they will be going to the building across from the office to do residential drop-off. Folks can go there and drop off their mattress, their um, couch, their variety of things that they have. They can take it directly to the transfer station if they want to. If you're someone who recycles and your recycle is more than your trash and it takes too long, by all means, you can go and drop off your recyclables at the transfer station once it's developed at no cost. Um, and there's uh, showing that the transfer station is in construction and it'll be available to residents come December. With the transfer station, it will be done slightly different. 
Um, if you want to use the transportation, and this is, I think, across the board, if you talk to your to friends in Dalton, if they want to use the transfer station, they pay for a sticker, they pay for bags, they pay for almost everything they do. There is a $120 fee to be able to use the transfer station. If you're over the age of 65, it is an $80 fee. If you have two vehicles and you want both vehicles to be registered, there's an extra $20 fee. If you want to bring your garbage there, there's a fee, which um, I don't know why you'd want to be, bring your garbage there when you can have it done um, curbside. Um, there is no extra charge for recycling as long as it still follows the same week, so paper, plastic on, on a rotating basis. The bulky drop-off mattresses, the cost is $55. Um, tires, 17 if there's no rim, 23 if there's a rim. And then small electronics, $10. 45 for large, something that has free on, $35 for small and $75 for large. And if you're bringing in metal, there's no charge. If you buy the base fee ticket and you want to bring yard waste, that is included in your base fee. So whether you pay the $120 or you pay the $80 for seniors for the year, you can bring your yard waste for free. If you choose not to purchase the, uh, the yearly transfer um, sticker, then you can go to the transfer station and buy a punch card for $20 that will allow you to bring 20 bags of leaves, essentially, to the transfer station and drop them off. The same rules will still apply, so they'll need to be in a clear plastic bag and and everything that you do today, you'll have to do then. Um, but you don't have to purchase the sticker in order to bring your yard waste if that's the only thing that you're going to bring to the transfer station. And um, it'll be $20 for, 10, for 20 bags, a dollar a bag. And then Recycling 101, um, you, know, you can continue to use your blue bins if you want to separate your recycling. Um, we still have plenty on stock Our, for metals, if food and beverage cans, for plastic bottle, jars, jugs, tubs, um, the same with glass bottles and jars, and then um, paper and cardboard, your newspapers, your magazines, mixed papers, boxes. You can't recycle plastic bags. You can't recycle clothing or linens. You can't recycle hazardous items. Um, no, no hoses, wires, tangly things and um, you can't recycle food or, or liquids. So that, in a nutshell, is um, where, where we're at in, in the rollout. Um, there are two email addresses. If you're looking for help after today or other parts, um, one is the Department of Public Services, dpw at cityofpittsfield.org or the other is the mayor's office at mayor's office at cityofpittsfield.org. Uh, the mayor's office phone is 499-9321. So, questions? Uh, one of the ladies back here said this is an awful lot of information to absorb. So there's going to be some place they can find the same information. So this presentation will be on the website um, for folks to be able to do. Um, I did say that we had calendars. Um, we have our growing list of frequently asked questions. There are, are printouts of those as well. And then we also brought, which I didn't mention, but one of the things that's not changing, if you're a disabled person and you already have backdoor trash pickup, that will remain the same. If you are not one of those people and believe that you are one of those people, we have the forms. I know we brought them when we came back in May but we brought them again, so um, Brittany has those forms over there if, if someone would like one. Um, on those colors, are they paint or write on them, our name and our number? Ricardo said no. Yeah. Yeah, there, I, I don't know. I think we probably could get by with an address if we talk to Casella. Um, so that brings up a good point. So when you move, your tote belongs to the house. 
it doesn't belong to you. So when you move, you leave your tote behind because the serial number is attached to the address, not attached to you. And when you move to your new house, they should be leaving their totes behind for you as well. So the totes aren't the city's, the totes aren't yours, the totes belong to Casella. Uh, we have a lot of trees in our yard and sometimes like small branches come down. Is that different from yard waste? No, that's yard waste. That's yard waste, so small branches. Is there a limit on a size or a definition of that? You mean in order to put it into trash? Um, yard waste the bag. Yard waste is considered grass clippings, leaves, and small twigs. Small twigs, but The larger ones you have to bind up bring them up to the transfer station when it opens. Oh, okay. And I should have probably introduced Leslie. She's, um, are you as administrative assistant? I'm office manager. Office manager and, and um, public services. Um, so she's also here to hear the questions and, and help with Ricardo. Okay, I always pass this one to the high school patient. Okay, all right. So initially, if I'm going to get that would be great. So initially, if we're going to get the totals automatically, how does the city determine that I'm looking at times? So we are using the system that we are using today. So if we pick up your trash, we have already identified you as an owner occupied. If you've moved and we haven't caught you, you're getting lucky that we're still picking it up. But we're using we're using what we have already. Do, do we pick up trash for them currently? So you don't have to do anything. If we, if we pick up your trash today, normally, because owner-occupied, um, non-owner-occupied is four family or more. So if it's a non-owner-occupied, two family, we pick it up. Yeah. The way this read, four units or less. Right. So that's just confusing because then you know, I was going to have to raise the rent. Nope. Nope. Okay. If we pick up trash today, we're going to continue to pick up and if we pick up trash and it's a three family or a two family or a four family, you're going to get two, three, or four sets of totes. Now, since I get the and it's by it's by household. So if you've got a four family, you've got four households. I'm not talking about, we're getting away from okay. the houses and the trash pickup. Okay. If I was to bring trash or something to the trash pickup, then I'm looking at the totals. 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 I'm looking at the so if you buy the transfer station ticket for you, you can, under your address, bring whatever you're bringing to the transfer station. Your tenants will not be able to go. Well, it depends on what you bring. Well, I know that. Like, it's pretty much out of my Yeah. Yep. But stuff that doesn't, I know it's just... If it's garbage or recyclables, there isn't a charge. <laughs> So I'm thinking that a lot, what you're saying to me is it's not going to fit in the container, so it's going to fit in the bulky drop-off. And it's going to either be one of those, oh, okay. so one of those things. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. I understand these are going to be dropped off at our residence. Correct. Where we live, there are a lot of people who are second homeowners and they just sell. Is there a way for them to contact and get those before they head south? Um, you don't have to be home for them to drop them off. I know, but if, if they're not home, it's months. Yeah. They go down to Florida. Yeah. They're not going to be able to do it. Do you have like a neighbor that can push them back for you? 
Well, that depends because we, in so, our village, we have to have them in the garage. How, how, and I can't use my parents because my parents would take off the first time it went below 40 degrees. They were on their way back. Normally, what is a snowbird schedule? Are they out of here before November 11th? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know the answer to that question, um, so we will make a note of it. Um, and I don't know where Jim went, but any questions that we can't answer today, um, we'll get answers to. We'll get them back to Jim to share here, um, and we'll add them to the frequently asked questions just so that um, we can keep track of those. Right, or you can share contact information with either Brittany or Catherine, and we'll touch base with you. Um, right now, like my initial thing would be, do you have a neighbor that looks at your house while you're away or someone that does that we could connect with? But I don't want to give you an answer that's just what I'm thinking. I, I want to make sure I'm giving you accurate stuff. In an effort to be proactive, um, can we get verification that each of my tenants will get their own totes? Do, do we pick up trash for your tenants currently? Yeah, but I, I don't know if it's all under one umbrella or each. So we would do by address. So if there's 25 A, B, C, and D, A, B, C, and D, whoever A, B, and C, and D is, because it's not attached to a person, it's attached to the unit. Okay, and my addresses are 408, 410, 412. So that's all fine, yep. But I'm trying to go a four family all in one building, A, B, C, and D. Right, yeah. A, B, C, and D all get a set of totes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So I know someone who lives in, um, I think it's a triple decker and they're each separate, but the landlord doesn't do recycling. What would he need to do to find out about recycling making that possible? Is it private pickup or public pickup? Because um, if it's public pickup, he should be doing recycling. If it's private pickup, he can, you can advise them to call our office and we'll get them in touch with. I'll pass that on to my friend. Okay. Deb? Can you just clarify if you want a second tow? Because the um, little postcard that we got in the mail said call the number. Yep. But when you call the number, it tells you to call back. After. Yeah, we, we fixed that yesterday. Um, See what happens when you follow directions? Well, so. Part of my, part of my um, piece is that we've made it this far, right? Now it's the rollout. So if we do a terrible job with the rollout and a terrible job of educating, it's going to be a terrible experience for everyone and probably the worst for me. Or actually, let's rephrase that. The worst for Brittany and Catherine because they're the ones at the other end of the phone that's going to be answering the phone. So we changed that, and that's where we've also said, man, I can picture 300 phone calls a day saying, can I have this? I don't want to necessarily burden the staff with that. So we're going to tr tr also try to create an um, online form where it, you do it and it goes right to a database, and then we can share that database with Casella. So if you were told to call back, you can do one of two things. You can call back, or you can wait a week or so and check out online and do it online. It will be on the city website. Mayor, can I interject real quick? How many people are sitting here right now going, I don't even know how to use the internet? Okay. So that's where Catherine and uh, Brittany come in. There's a mechanism for it. I know the mayor's busy a lot online. You guys, I'll, I'll be the first to admit you guys are getting a lot better being educated in the digital world, so welcome to the 21st century, um, but sometimes still a little challenging. So we can help you here at the center too. If you have issues and you need to get online, then we can pull up the city web. It doesn't matter where you pull it up, we just put your information in. So if you do have an issue and you're not sure um, how to do it and roll online, we can help you here. So, just to, so the burden's not on you to figure out how to do it. Winter jump. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get snow, I know. No, we're not. I'm, I'm trying to save lots of money in the budget. It's not going to snow all winter. These tokers are going to be out in the middle of the street. No, they won't. Well, by the time the snow cloud comes through, we have these great big, huge snow banks. And I live on Parkside, which is not a very wide street. 
and what do you put your garbage out today in? Uh, it's on the lawn, which is just before the road. Okay, but what, do you, what is it in? Is it in a barrel? You just put out a bag? What do you do? I only have one small bag, and my recycling bin is not. So one of the things that, as we started to recreate something that I think we've been talking about for 20 years, and that was this system, there are communities across Massachusetts and New England that use this exact same thing, and they don't have those issues. Now, I think that in the wintertime, what I would advise people is to put it to the side, you know, your driveway goes out, put it to the left or the right-hand side of your driveway, and it'll pick it up and take it. What if you can't? Or what if you put it out there and it's upright when you leave and it goes down? Are there two There's gentlemen on the truck? There's one gentleman on the truck. So... This poor guy's got to get on and off if the thing falls over in the wintertime, or are they just going to drive by and leave it? So this is not um, heavy, but it's also not light. So unless the plow driver actually hits it, it's not going anyplace. So when the plow driver drives 80 miles an hour down, down Parkside Avenue, that's going to withstand the... Uh, so tra trash or no trash, you should be calling my office when the plow goes down Parkside at 80 miles an hour so that we can address that because that's a problem. Yeah. That, and, and, and so that's, I get it, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm going to repeat something I said in the very first session here with you guys when we started doing this. Um, I can't solve every problem for every person, but we're not the first community to do this. There's yeah. hundreds of communities that are doing this. Um, there'll be some trial and error, um, but seriously, if we end up with a problem where the plow is going 80 miles an hour down your street and does something, forget, for, I don't care that he's ruining the trash container. I wouldn't know that he's doing that because he could be ruining a lot more than just well, the I trash container. It's going to be left if it gets knocked over and I'm not home to go out and straighten it back up. So we'll have a conversation with Casella. Kis I mean, I think what I would advise folks is if we're... If we're having a major snowstorm, I think past experiences, if we're getting a foot of snow or more, you usually get a notification that we're not picking up trash that day. So we need to figure out a way to ensure that your trash has to be out by 7. And if you live on my street, you better have it out by 7 because they're, they're there. Um, so I don't have time to wait and see if there's an advisory to say, I probably put my trash out the night before. Um, but if I knew there was going to be a storm, I would probably inconvenience myself and get up earlier and look and, and go do it. But if that, if that becomes a problem, call us. Along those same lines, if a plow comes by and damages the coat, who's responsible for it? Casella will replace it. If you sit here and get a saw out and ruin it and you rip off the wheels and you cause the damage, you're going to purchase your next cart. Um, if it's damaged from something other than you, Casella will do that. Mr. Mayor, what are the previous, in, in the previous presentations that you gave, there were questions about what about during the holidays and people have more trash and you were going to look into. So we do have that ability for folks to call. Like I said, if you want an extra tote, there's like a three week leeway. So if you want an extra tote for the holiday season, um, we're going to be able to do that. Yes. But the first tote, the first time you asked for a second tote was free, you said. No, recyclable, the second, recyclables, the second tote is free. Trash, the second tote is $40 per quarter. So it will depend on how long you have it. You have to have it for the quarter. But you can also take it to the drop-off. Right, you could take it to the drop-off, one or the other. What happens with people that live on the street that don't recycle? Then what is going to, you know, I mean, you got that one tote for that apartment, and it's in a four-apartment house, and nobody in the whole house recycles. 
Then what happened to... So, there will be four trash containers right. for that house, yeah, right. not one. So there's four trash containers. Um, I'm not going to buy into they're going to go dumping it into the park because let's go for a field trip right after this is done and I'll take you to all the parks. We have unlimited curbside trash pickup and they litter in our parks already. Um, and I don't know who's doing the littering. Um, I can tell you that um, during this process, I have a family member who lives in Dalton who said something about taking her trash to her daughters in Pittsfield. Um, and now she may not be able to do that. Well, I'm going to take that number and probably multiply by 2,000 people where their daughter or son or somebody lives in Dalton, Hinsdale, Peru, where they have to pay to take it, so they bring it to our curbside, and you, the taxpayers, are paying for people in other communities' trash collection. Um, they will, if they don't follow the process, they will get cited from Casella, and our health department will do follow-ups to educate and make sure that it gets done. Well, there's a lot of things that people are supposed to do that they don't do that we can't change. There was a hand here somewhere. Oh, it was me. Do you have a phone number if you wanted to contact Casella? Um, I will get that and give it to Jim. I don't have it off the top of my head. Okay. Um, Would you prefer that go to your office, though? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're calling Casella because they didn't pick up your trash or you got a complaint, I would prefer the complaint come to my office so that we can follow up on it. Um, so, but we'll get you the number to Casella anyways. Anyone else? Yes, um, I don't want the old trash cans. Don't need them. Uh, how can I get rid of them? Thank you, because that was something I was supposed to say that's not part of the PowerPoint. Um, we are arranging for two things. We are going to have whatever you don't want pickup day, and we'll advertise that. I don't have the date right now. Whatever you want, they're coming to pick it up. If you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to go drop it off, we'll have a drop-off day and, and a place and time for you to be able to do that. But we are going to ensure that if you don't want your old one, I'm not getting rid of my old one because I just spent $55 about six months ago for a new one. So I'm keeping that one as an extra. Um, but if you want to get rid of them, we'll pick them up. What about the blue bins? The blue bins as well. Um, I'm going to keep my blue bins as well, but it's, you guys can do whatever you want to do. Um, and again, I, I think it depends on whether or not you have two recyclable totes or not, because you're going to want to have something to separate your recyclables. Right now, I have a room room garbage pail. And I'm going to put it in the bin. So the good news whether it's the metal or your plastic stuff, mm -hmm. they're all recyclable. Okay. So we're going to collect it, and it goes off as a recyclable. Um, and just as a, like a reminder, part of this process, I'm going to be in a toter in a minute. Um, <laughs> part of this process is it's $122 per ton to get rid of garbage. It's $75 per ton to get rid of recyclables. And then when it goes to the Springfield MRF, we get revenues from that, which is averaging about $70 per ton. So $122 per ton to get rid of something, $5 per ton to get rid of something. Why are we not pushing hard at more recycling, especially when our recycling rate is 9%? So just think of the expenses that the city of Pittsfield is paying because we can't recycle. And if our goal initially is to get the 25% recycling, and we know that that will project to about $600,000 worth a year of savings. So now let's take that to 50%, 75%, and to 100%. And when we start saving millions of dollars in trash collection, it makes the budgeting process easier because you've got additional um, places that you can spend without having to raise taxes to make those spending allocations. Along that line, is there any way that the pickup is going to be monitored as to who is and isn't recycling? Yes. 
So when, when Casella starts picking up trash, there's one driver with an iPad with the entire route there. And so if you're a bad person and your tote is like this, they're going to probably tag this. They may or may not pick it up, depending upon whether you follow the rules. If you leave just trash in a bag, it's going to get tagged, and they're not picking it up. And then you'll eventually get fined if you don't follow the right process. So they will know who. Um, someone somewhere on Facebook asked the question, and we're trying to find the answer, but we're pretty sure we know. This is my recyclable container, and I put my trash in it. Um, there's cameras on the trucks. So we'll be able to monitor who's doing what. We may not be able to stop it, and the trash may get dumped into the recyclables. But we got the camera, and we're going to know who did it. And we'll be able to do a follow-up if that happens. My question is, once of those who don't recycle, they never put the recycle bin out. Is there going to be any way of? We will need to do so. Well, so here's my thing. If they're still in their one tote, and they're not recycling, um, which I could probably be one of those people. I don't think that I would fill this up in a week, even if I didn't recycle. Um, it'll be harder to, to go after them then. Um, if they want six totes and they're paying a hundred and or two hundred dollars a year or a quarter to have those, then they're paying the the price that we're charging for toters, the extra toter, is exactly what it will cost us to pay Casella for that to be disposed of, because. If they're going there to collect, it doesn't matter whether there's one toter or six. They've got to go by that house to collect. It's the tonnage, and that's why we're charging for the second tote. But we will know who's recycling, and we can attempt to do a campaign to force people to recycle as the best that we can to force someone to do something. Any other questions? <coughs> So once this uh, takes effect, my leaves and grass, it's going to cost me $120 to get rid of it. No. If all you're going to use the transfer station for is leaves and grass, it will cost you $20 that will allow you to bring 20 bags to the transfer station. I had 100 bags last year of leaves. So then you went to Holiday Farms, there's no charge. Right. There, you can take them to... Holiday Farm in Dalton, and there's some other locations that you can bring them to at no charge. Well, why are they charging now and they never did before? Good question. Uh, my, my assumption is that they're building a brand new facility that they need to find a way to pay for it. It's not going to do anything to clean up Pittsfield. People aren't going to go for it. I can tell you right now that um, I, I probably have had five private messages about it, and they're upset because now that we're monitoring what's happening, their trash is being inspected, or at least looked at, and if it's a bag full of yard waste, which they used to sneak in, they're not going to be able to sneak in anymore as well. I think people will get used to the new system. Right now, I've got to take it down to Lennox to get rid of it for free. And you can take it. Well, once the new transfer station is open, Lennox will not take it if you're a Pittsfield resident. So you can take it to Holiday Farm in Dalton, and they'll take it for free. There's also a place on Route 41 in Richmond or, or, or West Stockbridge, Stockbridge line that takes them for nothing. When you say bulky drop-off, small, medium, or large, who determines small, medium, or large? They do. We'll get, we'll, we'll get dimensions so that we can yeah. better define it. Perfect. Under, under the old way of doing it, they come and they look at the back of your truck and go, oh, that's, that's like 12 bucks. You, you, you know, because <laughs> they're So uh, that's why I asked why small, medium, and large. We'll get, we'll, we'll get a better definition. Uh, 
it is um, 28 and 3 quarters inches wide, 23 and a half um, length, and 20, 37 and a half deep. Tall. Huh? Can you do this again? It's 28 and 3 quarters by 23 and a half by 37 and a half. What is the average amount that one of those containers can hold for household trash, bag-wise? If you're using the 13-gallon kitchen bags, three and a half. Three and a half? Okay. It's, it'll take 48 gallons worth of stuff. So three 13-gallon bags is 39. It doesn't quite get you to the 52, but um, it, it's, it's three plus. I was just wondering, the email to view that list that you have with the cost would be for the transfer station, mm -hmm. is, can you tell me what the email is? It's going to be, it'll be on the website, it's cityofpittsfield.org. Cityofpittsfield.org and then it'll tell you. Yeah. Yep. Um, there'll be a, a piece for trash collection and it'll be there on the front. Someone asked me a question yesterday, Mayor, and my answer was personal. But they said, do we need to put our garbage in garbage bags when we put it into the tote? And my answer was, well, if you want the flies and the garbage and the smell, then and not use the garbage bag and just dump your garbage straight into the tote, it could smell like that. I guess I would ask the question, do you currently just throw your trash into the trash can or do you put it in a bag? Um, and I think most people would say I put it in a bag, so I would then say I would use a bag. I, I guess there's no requirement that we have to bag it. Um, I, I just think if you're in a if you're in a bag, it helps cut down some of the smell. And on that same token, though, should people get into their garbage, their toters, and stomp it down so they can put more bags in? <laughs> it's it's going to happen. So will, will the truck be able to dump it, and then you get? Because once it does its thing and puts it back down, you can come out at the end of the day and find out you still have half a tote full of garbage because you're back. Yeah, I. I so for safety reasons, I don't think I would recommend people climbing into the tote and, <laughs> and trying to, to pat it down. Um, and, and I would also say that if that happens to you, it's probably not something that you can put a claim against the city of Pittsfield for if you break a leg while you're in the toter. Um, I, think, I think you'll be on your own at, at that point in time. Any other questions? I don't have a question, I just have a comment. I mean, I've been coming to these things as long as you've had them there. They're really informative. I just hope, and it, it's like preaching to a choir. I hope everyone, the naysayers, attend the other two that you have coming up so they can be informed and not just complain on social media. Hopefully they're well attended, I don't know. Well, I know when we came here the very first time, and I walked through that door in May, and there were 80 people sitting in chairs, and it was an overflow. I turned to Catherine and went, oh, we're in trouble. Um, and it was a lively conversation. Um, we then went to Conti and did one there. It was far less attended than here. Um, and then I missed the one that was at Herberg. Um, but there was a pretty good crowd that was there um, and a lot of conversation. PCTV has been here to tape this one. It's my understanding when we do the one at the library that will be in Spanish, they'll also be recording that one. So um, folks should be able to get the information um, either coming in person or being able to sit in the comfort of their home and watch these later. Um, I, I know that I, I, I read social media like everyone else. Um, there were a lot of things that came from this first meeting and then other meetings that we're incorporating as we went along. So for all the people who just want to say, sign, seal, deliver, I'm yours. The mayor was going to push this through no matter what. He didn't care what your opinion was. Um, I would argue that that is not a true statement because we invested a lot of time in doing our community meetings. I find that communicating and being transparent is very helpful. The hard part about communicating and being transparent is if I if you don't like what I'm saying, I'm dead in the water from the get-go. If you're not going to engage in a conversation, if you're not going to compromise, if you're not going to try to work to make things 
um, better for everyone, then um, I don't know what more I can do at that point in time. Just a question. What's going to happen, like, in my neighborhood, there's usually two people in the job. What's going to happen to the other person? Only one person? So all of, the, all of the people that work for Casella are being offered other opportunities within the company. So they're either being offered to get their CDL licenses and drive a truck. They're being offered positions in the transfer station. Um, so there are opportunities for those folks to get a job. If they choose not to take one of those, um, then they're looking for another job. But there are opportunities for them to work in other places in the company. Any other questions? All right, so if there are no other questions about trash, I want to thank PCTV for coming out and, and recording this. Um, and I can take off the two microphones that are on my collar, and then we can get into talking about senior center needs or other needs that you guys have. Or if you only wanted to talk trash and you want to leave, you can do that too. <laughs>